it's Monday, which means we're making stuff. Um, today's demo is going to be about making Dresden blocks. So I've made a number of different Dresden quilts in my time and all different techniques. So this is the technique that I've found that I like the best. And to give you an example, I made this block in like the last half hour. So it doesn't have to be hard. It can be really quick and fun. And with the tools I'm going to show you today, you can do some really cool, very dynamic um, designs. With Dresden's, it doesn't just have to be that fan shape. You can do a lot of really fun stuff. So we're going to show some more details about how to do that kind of thing. Um, but for today, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on getting a good, consistent, solid Dresden block. And then we're going to talk about different ways that you can do different things. Okay. So. Um, today we're going to talk about making, cutting, sewing, making, pressing. And I'm going to give you various different tips and tricks on how to get a really successful, consistent design. I always like to practice, even if I've done it a bunch of times, I always like to practice the technique I'm going to teach right before the video so that I can be like, oh, that's a good tip because sometimes I forget them. So um, I have a whole list of things that are good tips and tricks to get this to go better. Now, the rulers that we're going to talk about, I have a number of different Dresden rulers. These are the ones I like the best. They're called Dynamic Dresden. And the reason I like these the best is because not only do they give you multiple different shapes and styles you can make with Dresdens, they give you a little bit more uh, flexibility in the size. So most of the time when you buy a Dresden ruler, it's uh, like a 45 degree angle, which is kind of wide. The one I'm going to demo today is the 18 degree, and the reason I like that is because you get long, skinny wedges. So if you're not sure what a Dresden is, it's called, they used to be called Dresden plate. I mean, they're still called Dresden plate blocks because it kind of looks like a dinner plate. You can also make these curved. You can make them 3D. You can strip piece your fabric ahead of time and make stripes. You can turn the other side under and leave this part open as well. Um, that's part of the other thing I really like about this set of rulers is they give you a lot of techniques. So I'm gonna show you some ideas of what you can do with these at the end, okay? So first we're gonna talk about the actual, this is how you make the shape. So I'm using the 18 degree ruler. This ruler is designed by Susan K. Cleveland. I have shown you some of her products before. We're actually gonna use two of her products today. So this is um, the 18 degree dynamic Dresden and you'll notice that inside the block is a shadow shape. Depending on which end you're gonna use, you can either have a wide Dresden point, which is what we're gonna to do today because that's the more kind of traditional shape that everybody recognizes or you can do a really skinny shape on this end. Or if you're feeling really frisky, you can Dresden both ends, which is kind of fun. So I like that the shape of the ruler gives you an idea of exactly what it's gonna look like for two reasons. One, you can line up, if you wanna um, fussy cut a shape, you can line up the shape inside that shadow which is really nice. So if you had a stripe or you had um, a design you wanted to make sure you were gonna hit, uh, you could use that that um, that template shape that's on the ruler there. Okay, we're going to use a sort of nondescript fabric because I didn't want to overwhelm you. This one I've already cut some blocks off of. I have cut a nine-inch strip of fabric, and then I'm going to line up my ruler with the angle. So my both ends of my ruler are flush against the ends of the of the strip set that I've cut. So I'm going to cut up one side and that gives me two Dresdens and then I flip the ruler and cut up the other side. So depending on how many blocks you're going to make or how many um, points you need you just cut out how many ever you need. So now I've got my basic shape. Now if I was using a fabric I wanted to fussy cut I would I could maybe have a wider strip and then I could lay this around wherever I wanted to and cut all four sides. But you do need to have the, the flat top and the flat bottom, however you cut it. All right, so I'm gonna take my shapes over to my sewing machine. 
I've got my quarter inch piecing foot on my machine already and I have my needle set to the center. If you are nervous about your stitch length, you can decrease your stitch length a little bit. I don't usually, I usually leave the factory setting on my stitch length. I'm gonna take my shape, now we're gonna point this end. So I'm gonna fold it in half. And one, the first tip is I don't just match up this end. I match up the whole shape and make sure that I have the whole shape folded in half. Because maybe you fold this in half and this looks straight, but this is over here like this. That's not gonna give you a real straight angle. So I match up my whole shape. I start sewing from my two raw sides, not from the fold side. The reason for that is as I'm sewing my, my from the raw sides to the fold is the fold creates itself. So the machine actually pushes the fabric together until you get that really crisp fold. So I will just take all of my pieces and string, um, string piece them together. I don't cut between the pieces because this just makes it go really fast. Like I said, I made that whole block in about a half an hour this afternoon, including the applique center. Make sure you're matching right sides together. If you're using batiks, it doesn't matter. So we're gonna pretend that we have, we have um, chain pieced all of our pieces together at once, okay? Obviously you'd have more than four typically. I've already got some made. So now I'm gonna come to my ironing board. And if I, I'm just gonna snip these apart. I forgot to bring it up here. I thought about it right after the fact too. This is a really good time to use that little ninja quilting star that I've got. All right, your next tip is if you take, if you have all of your pieces sewn like this and you snip off the fold, you don't wanna get too close. You don't wanna cut that close to it because you'll poke through. But about halfway up between the seam allowance here, about halfway up, just snip the corner off. So you should really only have that much really that you cut off. It makes a big difference though. So if we snip the points on all of these, this is the kind of thing I like to do in stages. And I'll just sit there and watch TV and snip all the corners. Then I'm gonna take all of my, um, my wedges, stick your thumb in the point, and then put your like middle finger or your ring finger with, on your thumb and just flip it inside out. Okay, so those go pretty quick. So I will just sit here and flip all of them at once. It's quick. Who knew? It's fancy. It's fancy. All right, so I've got all of them pointed out. They look like little gnome hats now. This is a time I really like using my RK turning tool. This turning tool is one of my favorites for a couple of reasons. One, it has flat sides, so it won't roll off my table. I do that a lot. It has a ballpoint top. Nothing's more frustrating than poking out corners and whatever you're using to poke out corners goes right through the corner. This won't do that because that ballpoint tip will poke out your points really sharp. Look how sharp that folds out, but it doesn't go through. I'm pushing pretty hard. It doesn't poke through because of that ballpoint tip. So I'm just gonna poke out all of my points. Hey, stop beeping at me. We're going to poke out all four of these. You can see how fast this process can go. Now, here's the, my next favorite tool. This is a prairie pointer, also made by Susan K. Cleveland. It's aluminum, and it has lines on it for making prairie points. I also like to use it for this, though, and you'll see why. Here's a little tip for using the prairie pointer. Put a rubber band on it. This sucker gets hot, okay? It's aluminum, so you can take and poke it right inside the, the point of your Dresden. Now here's my favorite part of this. If I just take and poke this in here and I'm not paying any attention, you can see how crooked that can get. But if I take my prairie pointer and I line my seam line up with the line down the middle of the crack, see how my seam line is right there and then there's a line down the middle of the tool? and I push that up in there, I get a really sharp point here, I get a perfect angle, and the seam line matching up with the reference line tells me it's centered. 
Now, back in the day when I used to do this, I would fold these in half and I'd make a pressing line and then I'd line it all up and it would take me forever. This makes it go so fast and you leave it in there while you iron. All right, so you get the point exactly where you want it and then the iron sets it with that aluminum piece in there. Now that's why she gets hot and that's why this rubber band is really nice for pulling it out, okay? So now look at how pretty of a point I have. It is so cool. I love this little tool. It is just, it's a really simple thing. And if you like make, be, making prairie points, you can do some really cool stuff with this. So again, I'm gonna pop that in there. See how my line's not lined up straight? I'm not gonna be happy with that. So I'm gonna turn the prairie pointer until this is straight. I'm gonna press it. I don't use steam right now. I'll use steam on the next one and I'll show you why I don't use steam. I mean, it's not gonna hurt anything, but it's not gonna do what you want it to do. I'm gonna pop the prairie pointer in there. There's metal in there. <laughs> well, the metal's okay. The problem is if you put the steam on, look at all the steam coming out onto here. So now your prairie pointer is hot and wet, okay? So yeah, it makes a nice crisp seam, but I'm gonna show you a better way to do that instead. So I don't use my steam when I'm using the prairie pointer because this just gets really sopping wet. So we're gonna press all four of our little points out. So this is what I was talking about. You put the prairie pointer in and if this isn't straight, rotate the prairie pointer until this lines up. Okay, so we're gonna press, all, we've got all four of our um, points pressed. We're gonna pull this out, we're gonna put that away. Now, after I have pressed the back side, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to hit it with steam because I don't want this to wiggle in the next stage. And I want a really, since most of these are going to be appliqued, I want to have a really crisp line right here. And steam does that for you. My, my favorite thing to do is to steam everything and then come behind it hit it with a bit of flatter, and go over it again without steam. And you have never seen crisper folds than doing that. And it smells good. And it smells nice. It's pretty. All right. So now we have four perfect Dresden points, and that did not take us very long. Now, I already made the other ones, so here's my next tip. When you go to sew these together, so let's say we want to lay these out where they alternate like this, right? Ask me how I've learned this one. Take your points or your, your plates and match them up so that they are in order. Or if you want to just take your whole stack to the machine, you can do that. But when you're sewing them together, because I chain piece these two, Make sure that when you're sewing these together, whatever color you have on the top with the first go is the one that's on the top for all of them. Otherwise, so let's say you sew these ones together and then the next time you sew them together like this, your seam's gonna be on the wrong side. Uh -oh. So when you go to put them together like a striped effect, you're gonna have a hard time, okay? So we're just gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't want to go and trim threads after the fact, or you don't like that tails are sticking out, which I don't like tails sticking out, here's another tip. If you match up your, your, the sides of your Dresdens and put it in the machine about mm, a quarter of an inch away from the end, sew a couple stitches and then back up a couple stitches until you get to the end, you won't have any tails because the tails will be all tucked in. You have to cut in between each one. You can't chain piece it that way, but you get a really clean, um, you get a really clean end stitch this way and there's no tails. Okay, so that's just another tip for you. So we're gonna sew all of these together, two at a time. So we get, we have twosies, and then you sew those together. 
Now, normally, if I was doing this in a normal time, I would sew all the twos together and then I would go and press them. You can press them open if you want to. I usually don't. I usually just choose a color and press them all to the same color. In this case, I would press them all to the blue. But for the sake of time, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna go ahead and sew the next two together. So once you get the twos together, you sew fours together. Now, depending on the angle that you're using, the wider angle ones, you get 12 blades. The skinnier ones, I think you get 16. So if you have 12 blades, you can't sew them all together as four. You're gonna to have to sew them together. Um, you can sew them together as four, but you can't keep putting, you know, you can't do four and then eight and then 16 because you'd have to do 12. So that's why I'm doing um, a six blade so I can show you how to do that. So now we have four. We'll join this one on. So this will make a six bladed um, Dresden. To make this a complete circle, this is like a third of a circle, but look how pretty of a fan that is. So now I'm gonna take this back to the iron because you know, sew a seam, press a seam, that's the rule. And I'm just gonna press them all toward that dark color. Now again, I find that this works best if when you sew two seams, you press it, you press them and then you join them together because then you don't have to rock this and you don't run the risk of pressing a seam you don't wanna press. But you know, if you got decent pressing skills and that doesn't freak you out, you can go ahead and press them. I wouldn't press the whole circle at once. So even if you have to get to where you have half a circle pressed and then you join the two circles together, that's fine. All right, so now we have our whole piece when I get the whole section that I'm going to do done, I will press everything flat and then I will steam it again. Because I want everything to lay as flat as possible before I go and applique it. Now this video we're not going to talk about appliqueing, but I am going to give you a couple of, couple of tips just there. This one so this has two, four, six, eight, ten blades, and it's a half. Of, it's it's a, like this would be a half. Um, all I did was a double bl a double blanket stitch all the way around. A couple of tips for doing this as an applique. What I did was I sewed all my Dresdens together. I sprayed it with 505 spray, stuck it down on my backing. Applique stitched it all the way around. I always cut my backing piece slightly larger than I know I want it to finish. So if I know I'm making 10 inch blocks, I cut like a 10 and a half inch square because after I have appliqued this down, then I'm gonna go and square this up. This fussy cut center circle thing that I made literally took me, I don't know, five minutes, including the fussy cutting. This is one of the techniques I'm gonna teach in the Queen's Dream Quilt class. So if you haven't signed up for that, but you're thinking about it, we make about, I don't know, 15 of those in this, of these in that quilt. So this is a really fun technique if you like to applique circles, but you hate cutting them out and the fussy cutting makes you nuts. This technique that I use is a piece of cake and super quick. All right, all right, so that's what I got. All right, do we have questions? Um. Something white. Well, something that. Something that's something, something that that's whiter than my hand. This. I probably could, yeah. Something that's whiter than my hand. Well, bigger. <laughs> bigger than my hand. <laughs> that. Yeah. So this is how that looks. So depending on, and I'm going to show you some options for different designs depending on the size of the strip set that the pattern has, calls for for you to cut. This tells you basically the, the length of your strip set. This is the shape that's underneath it, so you can fussy cut it. Um, that's why this is my favorite Dresden tool because it gives you a lot of extra information. The only thing I would honestly change about this is make it non-slip, but if you use some grippy spray, 
it makes it non-slip. It's not that hard because you're just cutting the one side. You're not if you cut the strips first, you're not really cutting all the way around the block. You just need to cut the sides. So that makes it not too hard. A spinning mat is a good, it's a good time for a spinning mat. So that's it. Sweet. All right. So like I said, I am going to show how to do those circle appliques in the Queen's Dream quilt. So if you want to learn that technique, um, that quilt has a Mariner's compass center. It's not a Dresden, but it's not paper pieced either. So that's a pretty fun one. So now we're going to talk about all of the products that we use today so that if you want some, you can snag them. The first thing we have is the size of the ruler that we used. So this is the 18 degree ruler. See how the picture shows both ends of the Dresden tucked under, and then there's a whole nother one inside, nested inside. I mean, how cool is that? This is the first time I've ever seen anybody do that with a Dresden shape, and that's what sold me on not only the rulers, but the book that goes with this, because I think that's brilliant. We might do this as a class, actually. I was, th I was thinking about doing um, a project out of this book as a virtual class. If that seems like something you might want to do, let me know. So number 601 is the 18 degree shape of the Dresden. That's the one we used in today's video. Number 602 is the 30 degree version. So this makes wider set um, strips. It's kind of fun. And some of the patterns that I have use this. So see how this is on the inside and there's, there's more points. You can use the wider set to do an outside ring and the smaller one to do the inside ring. And it makes this whole other dynamic shape. It's really neat. So this is the, oh, wait a minute. This is the 30 degree version of this ruler, which is pretty groovy. Next, number 603, we use the Prairie Pointer tool, which is this. This ruler is intended to make prairie points. So like these kind of shapes here, but I really like it for doing Dresdens. So that's like, it's a twofer. Okay, so this is the Prairie Pointer, also designed by the same person who designed the ruler. That one's number 603. Number 604 is my favorite stiletto. Well, my second favorite stiletto. For this application, this is my favorite stiletto. When you're putting these points together, sometimes you need a little bit of help getting those points up through your needle. And when you're appliquing, sometimes you need a little help guiding things through your needle. The reason I like this stiletto is because it locks into the lid. So this unscrews and here's the pointy bit and it screws back into the top because this is a little dangerous. And if you're like me and you bleed kind of easy, this is a really good way to like, you know, end up with something sharp underneath your fingernail when you're digging through your sewing basket. So I like that you can take the pointy bit off and turn it around and put it inside the case and then it's safe. I have had people come back, return this, and say the pointy bit's not on there. I was like, oh no, it's in there. You have to unscrew it. And they're like, oh. So that's the reason I really like the stiletto. It's got a nice long shape and you can really, you can get into places you need to get into with this. Okay. So number 604 is the Fancy Pro Stiletto. Number 605 is my favorite point turner, this one here because remember it has the bald tip, so you can really poke out your, your points and your corners without going through the fabric. Um, there's other applications for this, especially in the embroidery hoop. It has a blunted end, so if you have something that needs like to be friction set, you can use the other end and rub on it, rub on the um, like two-sided tape, things like that, so you can secure things down, especially in the embroidery hoop. That's why this end is designed like that. But this little ballpoint nub is my favorite. So the precision turning tool is number 605. Number 606 is the book that goes with the rulers I showed you today. Um, it's called the Dynamic Dresden's Book. And there are some of my favorite, favorite quilts in here, especially as far as um, Dresden designs. Where is that one? So, it's in here. Hang on. Should have marked the page. Oh, it's on the back. See how she's got the, the rings interlocked? The way that she does that is brilliant because these actually float on the quilt until you top stitch them down. So 
there you can interlock them and connect them but the ideas that she came up with for things to do with dresden blocks if you're an english paper piecer and you like to fussy cut stuff that's why the ruler has the shadow on it so you know exactly where things are going to line up so you can cut out your shapes so for instance this quilt here see how all the little birdies are in the same shape and then she's she's sort of nested in the, the other birdies on the inside. Look how adorable that is. And since she has dressed and pointed both sides of the shape, they interlock with each other and they just float on the background piece of fabric. So the only piecing there is, is sewing the two pieces together. I think that's brilliant. And the quilt that's on the front, she did this by sewing strip sets and then using the ruler to cut them on an angle. Also, I think it's brilliant. So number 606 is the Dynamic Dresden's book that has, I don't even know how many quilts are in here, but the inspiration is endless. Now, if you like things that are a little bit more traditional in the Dresden field, this book is called Dresden, Dresden Quilt Blocks Reimagined. So it's the same idea. You can still use these rulers to do that, but they just give you an endless option. So like for this quilt, see how this is, this is sewn together as two pieces. If you look at the ruler, which now I can't find, see how there's a line right down the middle of the ruler? If you sewed two pieces of fabric together first and lined this up down the center of your strip set or down your piece um, block and then cut the sides of the shapes out, that's how you get this really cool sort of two-toned striped effect, okay? So these other two books don't, aren't, go with the rulers, but they work. And there's just endless possibilities of what to do with Dresden blocks, okay? So this has 25 different patterns in it. Now, if you don't like a sewing machine and you want a piece by hand, Rebecca, um, this book, this book is uh, English paper pieced Dresdens. So you actually do this English paper piecing style. You can applique it down with a machine and you can do um, foundation piece like that. But this actually shows you how to do it as English paper piecing. So you would cut out your papers and your shapes or print out your print and piece and do them all like that. But you would use this to fussy cut them. Okay. This book has some cool stuff in it. So for instance, the block that's on the front page here, if you'll notice this gray bit right here, you can't even tell until you make the block. It, it's not stitched down, it's stitched in, so it's 3D. It is an amazing effect. So this is another one what we might do as a um, English paper piece class. This book has some amazing stuff in it. Like look how beautiful they are. So anyway, so this is a whole nother option that you can do as English paper piecing. You don't have to do it with a machine. That's fine too. So um, all, of, all three of these books have some beautiful inspiration for what to do with English, with um, Dresden blocks. So I hope you guys try it. Um, if you have questions about any of that, feel free to ask. Um, we monitor the comments for a little while to see if anybody wants to know anything or if there's something you would like me to show you that you've seen like that and it freaked you out. A lot of people, I hear a lot of people say, I don't know, Dresden quilts just look hard. They're not. They used to be because they used to like, you know, have, have templates and shapes and, and do everything by hand. This application is super simple. I love it. You can make some really beautiful quilts with uh, minimal effort. So, and I hope these tips help. All right, so. Wednesday's sale is going to be a super yard sale, which means stuff that has already been on sale is going to be marked down more and sold by the yard. So I hope to see you Wednesday at 430. And I hope you guys have a nice week.